Hey folks, as we do here on Fridays, I'm going to be revealing to you my $260,000 dividend stock portfolio. So in the clarity of my transparency, just do the channel a favor, hit that like button, folks. But of course, as always, we got to talk about the broader conversation, the news, what is happening this week on investors' minds. And it's got a lot to do with FOMO, stock crashes and bubbles. And I made a whole video this week talking about, you know, crashes and bubbles. I recommend you watch it because if you're a long-term cost average investor, this isn't something that should overly concern you. But there is a more macro news subject that is going to lead into this broader conversation. So let me reveal this to you first, guys, because we got to zoom out and talk about Doge coin dogecoin for those of you uncryptically inclined to understand you know the crypto market doge started as a complete joke at the peak you know back a couple years ago when bitcoin really started to take off someone's like heck hey we could just make a random crypto and make a lot of money here let's just make a joke coin and that is essentially what doge is right and as soon as elon musk opened his mouth about this this thing went from 0. 0.00 something like seven cents all the way up to seven cents. So congratulations to you if you've been sitting in this because you've thousand extra money. And it got such broad news conversation that Mark Cuban bought some for his son, like which is crazy to me, guys. And this led into the broader picture, right, of Elon finally revealing that he bought 1.5 billion. God, that's a lot of cryptocurrency, basically Bitcoin, right? Elon for Tesla, the shareholder said, hey, we got a lot of cash. Let's put it all into Bitcoin. And Michael Burry spoke out about this because he questions Tesla's Bitcoin investment. And of course, I'm going to offer my opinion as well. But let's read this article because this does breach into the larger speculations of the market. But Michael Burry has taken on a dig at Tesla and said that Tesla's huge Bitcoin investment was because it wanted to distract China from its regulation troubles. China's regulators had summoned Tesla over quality issues as consumers complain about the quality. But Tesla chooses the right time to invest 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. Burry also brought attention to the fact that those Dogecoin's value has also increased as soon as Musk had the tweeted, well, basically as soon as Musk tweeted about it. He called it a market bubble and predicted that it is unreliable and dangerous. Burry poked fun at Elon Musk, whose investment was perfectly timed with the Chinese regulations on Tesla. He said that Elon Musk has timed it perfectly and that history is on his side. Even Dogecoin, which was created as a fun cryptocurrency, now has a $10 billion market capitalization. Burry called it a doggy's breakfast, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Burry predicted that we are in a blow off top in all things. It means the market is in a steep increase now, which is alarming because, you know, after that, it usually is followed by a sharp decline. That can be a worrying factor for many. There will be a rapid decline in trading volume. He said that markets have bubbled over to the, in a dangerous way. It is a tough time to play God and take chances. That's why he poked fun at Elon Musk and Tesla. Murray believes that the $1.5 billion investment in Bitcoin was just simply to distract the world from Tesla's regulatory issues in China. And throughout this evolving story this week, guys, Tesla's stock price really hasn't done much. It has trended to the downside relatively, whereas Bitcoin, on the other hand, has been trending to the moon and beyond. So what does this say for Tesla first before we take a look at the broader market picture? Well, in my humble opinion, I think this was a really brilliant decision. Even the bullish a bullish Tesla investors out there all kind of recognize that the future potential this company has purely lie in, you know, regulation around self-driving. And we're not there yet. We probably won't be there for a few years. So in the meantime, you know, can this company prove its exponential rate of return as a company? And I think this was a good move to do so. They had a billion and a half in cash. They don't really have anywhere else to invest it. And Bitcoin has been one of the best performing assets. But keep in mind that also comes with a lot of extra risk. But that's the kind of company Tesla is. It's a forward thinking exponential compounded rate of company. But when you zoom out to these throthier pictures, looking at Tesla's valuation, looking throughout the SPAC market and the crypto world and just everyone chasing the slightest hint of hype and value. It leads to this idea that people aren't buying, say, Bitcoin for its underlying, you know, fundamental tools. They're buying it to get rich. People aren't buying Tesla for its underlying fundamentals. They're buying it to get rich. Now, that might not be all the investors out there, but starting to feel like a good percentage of speculating chasers are out there. And we're seeing them, you know, shift through all these different assets so quickly on this news, guys. Jim Cramer came out yesterday and actually touched base on a lot of this. And I think he had some relatively OK points. So let's take a quick listen. You got to be careful when it gets this frothy. But, and this is crucial, I am not saying get out now. I am not saying sell everything. I am simply begging you to exercise some discipline and sell something because nobody ever got hurt taking a profit. I don't want you to sell everything because, first of all, it's an excellent setup, as they like to say. 
Sure, the unemployment rate is way too high and COVID is still out of control, even if the numbers are coming down and we're doing much better with the vaccine rollout. However, those negatives are the reasons why the Federal Reserve won't raise interest rates. That means both the Fed and the tape, the action, are on the side of the bulls. It's not even worth fighting yet. I'm just trying to say that you're not a genius if you've made 50 percent in a month or a week or even a day. You're simply participating in one nutty, unsustainable moment of a part of the stock market. Bottom line, yes, you have to make hay when the sun shines. I want you to do that. Just remember, stocks ultimately are pieces of paper. And Wall Street will keep printing out those pieces of paper until the buyers run out of firing power, at which point the buyers will be steamrolled. We are not there yet. We are not. But if there's one takeaway from the froth meter, we are most certainly headed in that direction. So Jim Cramer touched on pretty relatively, you know, baseline intelligent points, right? When we're talking about if you're holding really speculative plays, they don't have any underlying fundamentals, they've run up hundreds of percent, takes them off the table. Not saying you have to sell the whole position, but this would be dumb not to. Because as many of you seasoned investors are aware, black swan events can happen at any given time. And honestly, as we see the speculation in investors' eyes glaze over chasing all these cool, really fun investments, they'll be the first ones to leave if people start selling. And we just saw it with GME, right? Like GME was a prime example of people that made a lot of money followed by a bunch of lemmings that said, hey, don't sell, hold the line, diamond hands, follow us all off a cliff together, guys. Well, we just made a bunch of people rich. You don't want to be that guy. You just want to be the guy that gets in and, hey, I'm up hundreds of percent. I believe in this cause still. So, you know, I want to put some in my pocket. Let's play with some house money here. I did the same thing with MindMed. I continue to diversify my portfolio over the long term because I'm expecting another black swan event. You'd be ignorant not to realize the markets are going to crash again and again and again and again. So you might as well just continue buying in the markets, but do it in a way that's diverse where you're not over leveraging your risk, which is a great time to dive down into my own personal six-figure portfolio here, folks, which today continues to hold the all-time highs, sitting below $260,000 here. After I did my own personal readjustment, which I think was very appropriate at this time, guys, I'm currently getting $7,545 in dividends. So even if the markets crash, I'm still very likely to continue to get those payments because they're coming from very foundational companies, obviously like Apple and Johnson and Johnson's of the world. I broke all of my adjustments down for this week, guys, and this is where everything currently sits at the valuations going into Friday close and it's very well balanced in my opinion. I'm very, very happy with this and I'm trying to look away from it and not play too much with the bar of soap as Buffett says, the more you play, the less you're going to have. Whereas I'm more focused now on going back to, to working, building up cash flow and kind of looking for new positions to add, which I continually am digging down some rabbit holes on new companies. I'm going to be talking about very soon with you guys, but still just taking a look at the risk tolerance of my portfolio where I'm a lot more comfortably seated right now. I took a huge position of my mind met. I put it in QQQM to give me the broader NASDAQ. 100 exposure guys. I also bought my SRAC, which today is trading down. It's been relatively flat since I've been cost averaging into it. Whereas my med has actually been trading up nicely. You know, I always say this guys, when I sell stocks, you should be buying them. But this, this is my own personal journey here. And I'm just trying to adjust my risk tolerance so I can sleep easy at night, right? And I'm still holding my, my med position is worth about $11,160. So no complaints there, but my risky basket of stocks right now, it sits at a perfect 10%, which I feel really good about guys with 27% being growth and now 63% dividend. It's going to be continually fascinating to watch how this year continues to evolve. And if you guys want to continue the conversation tonight, I suggest that you join us over at the Passive Income Educator, our live stream channel. We just crossed a thousand subscribers. Thanks so much, guys. For myself in the six-figure mind of Matt Money, combined we have over a million dollars invested in the market and we kind of have a few drinks. Every Friday night, get together and have casual conversations about the stock market and all the news that I bring here for you guys. So I pass the question off to you. So I pass the question off to you. Again, what do you think about the crazy throthiness and speculation in the market. Do you think we're due for a pullback? Are you just going to continue to buy in the market like I do? I always recommend having an emergency fund, of course, but I think it's common knowledge and you should already have that out of the way. But stay cool, stay awesome, and I'll catch you guys very soon.